Alright guys, welcome back to Super Metroid Redesign Axial Edition Part something or other. Final Mix. So we're trying to get beam combo early so that I can do things, maybe. Um, I'm failing horribly at it. Uh, yes, by default you're only allowed to have one beam equipped at a time. All other beams other than charge beam will automatically de-equip. Uh, but we're trying to get the beam combo item, which will allow us to bypass that. And in order to do it, I need a very, uh, I need to get a shine spark up a certain sandfall in the room with beam combo, and then I will be able to pick it up. Unfortunately, I keep falling through this spot right here into out of bounds and instantly dying because no fun allowed. But in case you're wondering, um, no, there is no quick change for uh, there is no quick change for your beams. Um, you have to, if you need to change beams, you have to go into the stat, uh, into the start menu to change them. Ah. Yeah, it does. Um, thankfully, up until you, uh, for the majority of the game, you actually don't need to rapidly switch beams. There are a couple areas where you have to switch back and forth between beam or between wave and ice, but for the most part, that that's only in early Norfair. And some parts of um as well as uh some parts of lower criteria until you Ah I will not pull out save states. I am better than that. All right. I'm trying to get through this entire hack save stateless. I have yet to be able to actually do that. Um, my last playthrough of Axial Edition had me pulling out save states when I finally got to the escape. because there are some really obnoxious moments in the escape that hopefully he has fixed. Oh, come on! I hit the button to go horizontal. I didn't mean to go through the door. Not yet. Oh, I should have just tried to reset up the sh Shine charge again. All right, whatever. Ah! It stopped the shine spark, but it didn't reset the charge. <laughs> 
apparently. I missed it. Um, all right, so what the heck? That should have been the sandfall. Do I have to be like right in the center of it? Hmm. Alright, we'll give it one more shot. Horizontal. Uh, I think it was Prime 3, because Other M definitely did not have beam-only Metroids. It had traditional Metroids. Super Metroid has beam pirates. Alright. For some reason, it's not accepting my Shine Spark input. Hmm. I think I... <laughs> uh, because for some reason... That's weird. Um... No, that's not it. Because for some reason, the chat is not showing properly. Um... There we go. All right, well, that was awkward. That So, for the past two hours, the chat hasn't even been displaying properly. Nice! Uh, where was I? All right, so... I definitely had the correct... Um... Okay, I think I know what's going on. Hmm. Alright, so, uh, basically what's happening is there are a bunch of special tiles that Drew made specifically for the hack that prevent certain actions from being taken. Um, so what I'm thinking is happening is that I'm falling through 
a block that makes that uh, sand pit uh, solid instead of pass through. Mm, I lurk on the Metcon's Discord. I don't really. I talk in the voice chat every so often, but probably. Hi, welcome. And off the screen we go into death. Okay, I'm going to give this one more try, and if I still can't get it, I'm just going to go kill Dragon after farming ammo. I mean, there's a non-zero possibility of that. I do not. I, I, the only thing I know how to do in Smile is to look up enemy stats. That's all that I use it for. I don't know the first thing about actually hacking. Uh, Metroid MST actually has a ton of resources on his channel for it. Uh, he goes under Shy Guy Express on YouTube. for trying to reset the spark, but I didn't die that time. I th and I think I know what's happening. So as I'm coming off here, I land in a cr if I land in a crouch, because I automatically turn myself around, what's probably happening is the game is, um, the game is landing me in the crouch, turning me around, f doing a forced stand up without actually moving the sprite, causing my feet to fall through the floor, breaking the floor and causing me to fall off the, uh, fall off the map and instantly die. So, I'm not actually sure that's a level design problem. I think that's an, actually an engine problem. But it's still really annoying with Drew's little, oh, you went out of bounds, let's just kill you instantly thing. Well, so that's the thing, is um, going out of bounds does not necessarily mean you fall forever. Ah, all right. This is not working, so we're just going to go kill Dragon. I have Plasma already anyway, so if I had Beam Combo, I would be dealing a absurd amount of damage to Dragon, but since I just have Plasma, I'll only have to deal with a ridiculous amount of damage. Oh yeah, I, I don't even bother with challenge hacks. They, I prefer to enjoy my games, not to be frustrated by them. And I say that knowing uh, knowing full well that I'm playing Redesign, which is uh, anything but enjoyable in a lot of circumstances. 
But there's a couple of things about redesign that I actually do genuinely enjoy. Uh, there's always a quite a number of good ideas implemented it, in it. And actually, I want to farm up a little bit more ammo just so I can deal with the uh, turrets. Eh, it doesn't really bother me that much um, because you're not required to switch beams that often. All right, crabs, I don't need health, I need ammo. One more super, and I'll be good. Uh, actually, in Axial, you can skip that. Uh, there, there are some grapple blocks that allow you to completely bypass the two sets of ninja pirates that you have to fight. Save. Time to fight Dragon. Oh, good. Well. Yeah, we're going to kill Dragon. So, Dragon... Uh, has had her weaknesses changed. Similar to Ridley, she can be damaged by uncharged plasma shots. She takes 10 times damage from uncharged plasma shots. So whereas plasma normally deals, I want to say, 90 damage, um, it deals significantly more damage. Also, Dragon takes a ridiculous amount of damage from bombs as well. Somewhere in the order of, like, three to f uh, almost as much damage as, like, supers or something. But, whatever. She's dead now. And now I can go get beam combo properly. Uh, so, you can get plasma from... Or, you get plasma in Lower Norfair. And there's a room with, uh... I'll show the room off when I go back through Lower Norfair. Um... Actually... It'll be quicker if I just go... Yeah. Uh... 10x damage from Plasma will do that. Actually, it's there's no puzzle in the room with the eight that you have to fire the eight supers. Uh, screw attack had the puzzle. In Lower Norfair, there's the vertical room where you had to fire the eight supers. One of the Namahes, the uh, fireball, or the fireball shooting mounts, uh, is can be killed with a super missile. If you kill that Namahe, the uh, the gray door in that room will unlock allowing you access to Plasma's room before killing Ridley. Yes, Dragon is female. The uh, the little mini, or the, the Evers that float around in her room before you fight her, those are her children. So yes, not only are we murdering a giant space shrimp, but we're also depriving her children of their mother. Isn't that great? Granted, the children then descend upon her in a cannibalistic frenzy after her death, but... <sighs> Life is weird. Alright, so, up here... is the path to... Uh, or the path to the switch 
for Steam Combo. That door was just unlocked by killing Dragon. Let's see, are these still shot blocks or are they power blocks? Oh, good, they're bomb blocks now. back to the big sand pit room so that I can go and get beam combo. And actually have the firepower to fight Ridley. Um, it has its uses, but yeah, it can be the uh, sudden acceleration as you lunge forward can be a little annoying. It does make traversing rooms very quick, though. All right. Now, you got to be careful in here because you can and will if you uh, fall through. Come on, get, get up there, Samus. There we go. Uh, no, you cannot use Wave Beam from below uh, because Wave Beam will not reach it. And also, Drew put invisible enemies in the floor uh, that block your beam shots. Here, I'll demonstrate. So, now that we have beam combo, we can equip Ice Wave and Spazer, or Ice Wave and Plasma. But as you can see... There are enemies, and actually, if I disable... No, not that layer. Uh, no? Okay. Alright. Uh, apparently, they're no longer visible, but you used to be able to actually see them if you disable... Oh, there it is. See that little garbled uh, bit of garbage up there in the corner? That is what blocks you from being able to just fire a wave beam shot uh, to the switch. Now, in redesign, I think it was, there was a way you could actually hit the switch with a charge shot... Um, because of the way that beam acceleration works and the way that the game spawns enemies on screen, uh, you could fire it in such a way that it would pass the enemy but still be considered active in the game and get the switch on screen to have the be to have the shot hit it before it... Um... But it... I, I don't know if that can actually be done in Axial. All right. Anyway, that's enough technical mumbo-jumbo. Let's go to Norfair and kill us a giant space pelican. Now, it, um, the reason why I wanted to get beam combo before fighting Dragon was because if I was able to actually get it active in the Dragon fight, uh, Dragon takes... Uh, assuming that the weaknesses haven't been changed, Dragon takes about... 50 times damage from Ice Wave Plasma. And Ice Wave Plasma deals 900 damage a shot, I think. So basically, she dies in like two hits. Oh, wait, no. 900 damage is the charge shot. Uh, uncharged, I think, was like 200 or 300 something. Still, it's a ridiculous amount of damage that kills Dragon in like no time flat. Yeah. 
All right, well, either way, I can go back and unlock that silly, uh... uh where is this? This is not where I want to go. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of those types of puzzles either. Just because um, a lot of them require really precise timing that I'm not very good at. Alright, so now that we hit that green switch, we can actually get up here. Which, oh look, it's a purple door. Ammo check! I think I picked up some ammo. And here we have another guardian. Now, oh, are these bomb blocks? Oh, they are bomb blocks now. They used to be shot blocks. And in redesign, power bombs can't break shot blocks. They can only break bomb blocks. Actually, um, I wonder... Okay, no, he actually did fix that. You used to be able to fire a wave beam shot through the wall to hit that switch. You can't do that anymore. But that was in original redesign. That wasn't in Axial. All right, so the first Meridia Guardian has been disabled. Two left. I still also have, I think, two Criteria Guardians and uh, one Norfair Guardian to unlock. Uh, the gravity and the single beam use was definitely inspired by Metroid Prime. Uh, but there were also bits inspired by, um, uh, inspired by Metroid Fusion as well, such as the wall kick off of the jump, off of wall jumping. Alright, so... Let's see, where are we? Um... Quickest way back... Do I want to just go through Lower Norfair again? Most of the place has been unlocked now. Uh... Oh no, that, that's going to take forever to go the long way back around. If I take the shortcut elevator... Um, hmm. Actually, the quickest way will be to take the zip tube in... Meridia to get back to Crockmire's area. Oh, yeah. Um, 12 Chozo Guardians, 12 Chozo Artifacts. Yeah, that was definitely Metroid Prime inspired. <laughs> but, I mean, Hyper Metroid also uses a similar mechanic with the uh, 15 Turian Gates. And I actually really liked Hyper Metroid. But then again, I like Project Base, so... This way is just to go straight. Oh, and actually, while I'm at it, let's just pick up the Meridia map. That I completely forgot the first time it was here. Uh, 
Okay, so we are going to make our way back down to Ridley, and that is going to be it for the night. I I agree. I, I do agree with that, because the, uh, the gate hunt in Hyper Metroid actually had a purpose beyond just unlocking Turian. First, it got you screw attack. Second, uh... Unlocking the gates in Hyper Metroid also unlocked further areas in the hack. Whereas in Redesign, unlocking the 12 Chozo uh, Guardians doesn't do anything other than Turian access. And most of them are so hidden that you'll never know they were there unless you were specifically looking for them. All right, so back to Crockmire's area. Because I did unlock the Lower Norfair entrance behind his fight. Alright guys, um, unfortunately it is getting a little bit too late, so I am going to have to call it here for the night. So come on back next week and we will hopefully finish the game after round whatever against the giant space pelican. So thanks for tuning in guys, I will see you next time. Have a great night.